really know what it means to be indicted, it's not as intimidating or scary as you might think it is, and you don't need to panic if you find yourself indicted for something. Don't take it lightly, but don't panic. Hello folks, I'm Andrew Williams, and this is another edition of The Fedora Lawyer. In this video, I explain exactly what an indictment is and how it's used, and you shouldn't be afraid of it either. It's actually a mechanism used to protect you from government overreach. An indictment is only a formal notice that you've been charged with a crime, and that crime carries a punishment of more than a year in prison. It's nothing more than a probable cause finding, which means there's some evidence to connect you with whatever crime they're accusing you of. And it's a far cry from proof beyond a reasonable doubt for a conviction. Indictments are mandatory before you can be prosecuted for any crime punishable by more than one year in jail. Now, the indictment is embedded in the United States Constitution in the Fifth Amendment, which states that no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime, also known as a felony, unless on a presentment or indictment by a grand jury. By the way, I'll be making another video regarding the grand jury process because a lot of people don't understand that either, and they're very afraid of it. Now, like I said, an infamous crime is basically a felony and a felony is any crime punishable by more than a year in prison. Anything less than a year is a misdemeanor and an indictment is not required. That's why DWIs, simple assaults, thefts, and things like that, which are misdemeanors, are not indicted. It's because you can't be sentenced to more than a year in jail for any of those. The indictment process was designed to protect you from overzealous government officials. It keeps them from prosecuting you for anything they feel like prosecuting you for. At the very minimum, the government has to get past the grand jury first and get an indictment before they can proceed with charges against you. If the grand jury approves it, they return an indictment or a true bill. If the grand jury turns it down or turns your case down, it's called a no bill and the prosecution stops dead in its tracks. Now, it's not real difficult to get an indictment. Usually the prosecutor will just read the offense report to the grand jury or maybe have a police officer or another official come in and testify about how and why you got arrested. If there's any evidence, any at all, to connect you with the crime, you get indicted. Now, before the state or the government, the federal government that is, can take you to trial on any crime punishable by more than a year, they have to indict you first. This is mandatory, but you can also waive the indictment too if you want, but you have to waive it in an open court in front of a judge. However, you never want to waive indictment without an attorney's advice, and you don't want to waive an indictment unless you're going to get some benefit for it. Like, for example, uh, if you plead to certain charges, they promise not to indict you on other charges, something like that. Otherwise, you really don't want to do it. So, you shouldn't panic when you hear the word indictment or that you've been indicted. It just means there's probable cause to arrest you. Get yourself a good lawyer, and as always, don't talk to the police until you have a lawyer by your side. I hope this information was helpful. If so, hit the like button for me. If you want to learn more about legal issues, especially criminal justice issues, you can also subscribe to this channel. I plan on making lots more videos in the future on all sorts of legal topics. You can also check out these two videos to get you started. For now, this is the Fedora Lawyer signing off.